I must tell you, I had a fantastic Holy Week. It was so beautiful. We had a lot of people in the church. It was lovely to see the church full on Easter Day. And this year, we instituted Tenebrae uh, on the Wednesday before uh, Holy Thursday. And it really, it's our first time we did a very beautiful ancient liturgy. We had about 75 people there, which kind of surprised me. And a lot of people reported they really loved how that set off for them the rest of Holy Week. But for me, I was filled with joy. I know Catherine realized afterwards, I was walking on the air a after to see how many people love that beautiful celebration. And so we'll bring it back next year itself. But I love Holy Week. And I love every part of it itself. And I really appreciate Good Friday and to remind us what God has given, what the suffering of Jesus. Then we come into the Easter season. And I got to tell you, I love the readings throughout Easter. And I love how we're always focusing on John's gospel for the most part because it's so lyrical and so poetic. And it really kind of brings you in that beautiful bread of life discourse that we hear. But this week we were listening, and we're starting in the Acts of the Apostles. It's an extension of Luke's gospel, and inside this gospel itself, it tells us about the early days inside the church and how the church is set up. And there's some funny stories inside there. Some of the Peter and Paul, at one point, they're fighting in each other so much they have to get in different boats and go to different countries. But of course, wouldn't we understand those are men? That would happen. All right. But we see all these things in their imperfections we see the Holy Spirit working through them and doing tremendous things. But in this week, what I really love and I hear inside these readings is the forgiveness that the risen Lord through his apostles are bringing to those people. You know, those people who would crucify Jesus who were there and they said, crucify him, crucify him. Where are they? They're in that by, by the, the, the portico of Simon and they see that crippled man healed. And they, what do they do? They all of a sudden realized what they had done which was wrong. And they repented in a way and they followed Jesus. And then we hear Jesus speak, we hear them speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the church elders, the ones who would go off there and crucify Jesus. And what, is, what are they doing again? They're offering forgiveness to them and saying they didn't know Jesus on the cross, they know not what they do, and trying to bring them back into the fold. You know the good news for us on that is? If you think about what they did was so horrible and awful, compare our lives, because we all have some type of skeleton in the closet. It's either equal or much lesser than what they did. And it seems to me if the Lord Jesus could forgive them for those for the sins that they had committed inside them, which were horrendous, and we all know that, we should never, ever peel and think the Lord won't forgive us. He will forgive us. We got 58 days of Easter, right? And I think, you know, in Lent, we have 40 days in which we have almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. I think the 50 days of Easter we have, I think we should start each day by writing down there in a small book one thing we're thankful to God for so we can fill our hearts with Easter joy and see how alive the Lord is inside of us and how He's working through us in some dynamic ways.